So look at this protests erupting in Vienna this weekend ahead of Austria's planned COVID-19 lockdown, but the country is also announcing it will close for at least 10 days starting Monday and and that vaccines will be made mandatory by next year. Chaos broke out in the Netherlands where riots over partial lockdowns have turned violent. At least five police officers were hurt and seven people were arrested. Here to react, Douglas Murray, the author of The Madness of Crowds, Gender, Race and Identity in the Strange Death of Europe. And he's in person and it's always good to see Douglas in studio, okay. which we were just talking about. So, Douglas, you have moved to New York and you were just telling me when it comes to wokeism, the United States exports this to Europe. It, it's sure. nascent in, in England. It's, it's not as big as it is here, for example, in New York. But I can't figure out where we are in COVID. Who follows whom when it comes to COVID? Is Europe mm. on the front edge or are we on the front edge of being the most authoritarian? Well, you know, Europe has the disadvantage of something that the states has an advantage of, which is at least in the U.S. you can decide this state by state. You know, uh, if you don't like one particular state, you can. If you're flexible enough, if you're lucky enough, you, you can move to a state where it's, it, it's, it's better for you. Last year when I was covering the election, one, at one point I flew from uh, uh, Seattle and Portland, Oregon, straight to Pensacola, Florida, and it was like living in two different continents, never, right. name, never mind the same country. In Europe, you know, you, if you're in a particular country, you, you're stuck. Um, and that's, that's one of the reasons why we see this incredible just pent up anger in countries like Austria. You know, Austria was talking earlier this week of having a lockdown only for the unvaccinated. Right. So if you're not vaccinated, you can't leave your house. So they were trying to make this as difficult as possible. Now they've decided to make it a nationwide vaccine. Germany's talking of follow, following suit. If you're in the Czech Republic or Slovakia, your government already treats you, if you're not vaccinated, as being in a different category of person as the rest of, of, of the country. Now, as it happens, I, I'm vaccinated. I'm, I'm for vaccination. My gosh, I'm not for these mandates, you so know? That's why I ask you who's on the cutting edge, because while you're saying, you know, Europe kind of follows the U.S. when it comes to this woke movement, mm. I'm worried. When I watch Austria invoke a nationwide vaccine mm -hmm. mandate, is that soon coming to the United States? I don't think it will because of the, the issue of state by state difference and because I don't think the American people would put up with it. I just don't think the American people would put up with it. What various countries in Europe are being told to put up with is insane. That's why we've seen things like this outbreak of violence two nights ago in Rotterdam in the Netherlands. Uh, people are, are not, I mean, they, but they don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're being treated as second class citizens if they don't have the vaccine. Uh, and, the, and, and here's the other thing, and as I say, I mean, I'm not, I'm not skeptical about the vaccine, but if you all remember the public looking at what you've been told and you've seen people who are triple boosted, still getting, still getting the virus and much more, of course they're wondering what it is they're told. You know, we have, we have a virus that primarily targets, for instance, the obese. Which right. country in the world, which country in the world has had any kind of campaign against obesity? None. But they lock up the entire public. They make everybody go into their houses. They say, if you aren't vaccinated, you're a second class citizen. Of course, people are suspicious. And of course, they're worried. You know, in, in Europe's history with authoritarianism is also right. a cautionary tale here. Right. It's not like it's not like the Austrians and the Germans don't have good reason to worry when the government tells them that it's going to overreach. Right. You know, this is the type of stuff not to be hyperbolic. And I don't think it is to say we haven't seen since the mid 19th century, well, since the mid 20th century. Well, we haven't seen before people being told that they're basically going to be put into two categories of citizen the vaccinated and the unvaccinated, the responsible and the irresponsible much more. And as I, as I said in the piece in the, ten, in the Telegraph today, this would be sort of understandable if COVID was Ebola, you know? It could be understandable if COVID was Ebola, but it isn't. It, you know, it's a deadly virus for many people who, it, who haven't been addressed, but it isn't, the, it isn't the virus that they're presenting that would mean that you trample on every single human right of every member of your citizenry. Right. All right, Douglas Murray, we're glad to have you in the United States of America. Hey, it's great to be here. All right.